turning Japanese. I think we're turning Japanese. I really think so. <laughs> Yeah. You were supposed to go do 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 do. Yeah, do, yeah. Do. that takes me back, you know. Does it? Does it? Take me back. Yeah, a good track. Very good track. As good as what we're about to talk about now. Bukashi. Yeah. How do you say it? Uh, just the, the way you've already said it, Bukashi. Yeah, and Bukashi. what is it? Bukashi is, uh, well, in this in this form, it's a bran that's been inoculated with a uh, culture of microscopic organisms. So loads of bacteria and fungi and yeasts and things like that, and mycetes and. Okay. Farmer Phil made this. All sorts of goodies. He did. He did. And Phil took this, he got the bran, and he mixed it with uh, some molasses and a culture, uh, which contains billions of microscopic flora and fauna, sprayed it onto the, the bran, wetted it down, put it into, uh, into big plastic bags so that it could ferment in an anaerobic environment, effectively growing on those tiny little creatures. And then, when they'd grown on and they'd proliferated that bran, he dries it. So all those little organisms are just sitting on that bran, completely dormant. Does it smell nice? It smells gently pickly. Yeah, it smells... It does, it does have a really nice aroma about it, doesn't it? Not unpleasant at all. Now, in Japan, they use rice husks, so does it matter what medium this is? I no, mean, this it's is just... The bran is great because it's very light, and, uh, and it's fantastic because it covers a large space with a relatively little uh, in terms of volume, so... So is this composting or not? It is composting. In a way it's composting. What you're doing is you're accelerating the rate at which your food waste can rot. So you accelerate the rate at which the food waste deteriorates. But also, because you've got all these multitude of wonderful microbes on that, on that Bokashi bran, you're able to treat proteins as well. So every bit of your food waste, the scrapings from your plates at the end of the meal, can go into your Bakashi bucket. No way. Yeah, for sure. I don't believe you, Richard. I'm it setting absolutely one up. Absolutely true. Okay, so, yeah, how do I do it? It's quite a simple thing. So you've got your tap, and the tap is, uh, is something that sits in the bottom of the bucket purely to drain off the liquid. So you have this wonderful liquid that comes off the waste as it deteriorates in the anaerobic environment of this sealed bucket. Right, two washers, yeah. where do they go? They would go one against the, uh, the, uh, the butt of the tap now, and then that tap goes on the outside of the, uh, of the bucket, and then the other washer goes over the top of it on the inside of the bucket, and uh, the nut goes over the top of that. So you want to make it sure, sure that there's a nice seal there. And this? So that quite literally drops on the shelf at the bottom of the bucket, and that's where all the waste sits on. And that little beauty that you've got in your hand is, uh, is something that you can catch the water in when you tap off the liquid from the, from the bucket. And I could get my Bokashi in it if I was posh. If you're that way inclined, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right, what waste can we put in there, Mitch? So practically anything here. There's uh, The only thing to avoid, uh, possibly um, don't put your paper and cardboard waste in there, but you can put in there um, fish skins and, uh, and cooked bits of ham that's left over on the plate, cheese, oh, I've tea got bags. Some. I've got a bit of cheese. Do you register in some tea bags? I got a bit of tea bags. So all that stuff can go in there. There was a, there was a time when uh, when people thought perhaps it wasn't a good idea to put tea bags in there because of the, the uh, propensity to just kind of absorb uh, liquid. But that's absolutely fine. So tea bags can go in there. So once you've got a layer of waste in there of all those all those goodies, you can put on a handful or a little <laughs> thingy full of bokashi bran, and you just sprinkle it over the top. So there's a nice healthy covering on the top of each layer of waste that goes in there. Perfect. And then you can just layer it like that, so it's like a sandwich effect. So next time you put the lid back on, so you'll seal that in there. Uh, make sure it's nice and, nice and firmly closed. Um, and then next time you want to deal with your, your food waste the following evening or the like, you just put it in there in exactly the same way, sprinkle a layer of bran over the top of it and seal it again. And in my kitchen? Yep. In your kitchen, yeah. It's yeah, going to smell. Absolutely. No, it doesn't really smell. There is, sometimes there's a little bit of odour from the waste. Um, but it should smell just of uh, fermented apples. So you would get that slight scent of, of pickling, but it's not, it's not unpleasant. Sometimes the liquid does smell a little bit unpleasant when you're tapping it off. So occasionally it might be a good idea to take it outside the house to tap off the liquid. But it only smells in the initial instance of coming off the bucket. Because the most amazing thing about a liquid is you can use it to pour down drains to stop drain smelling because what the liquid will do because it's full of these friendly organisms they will out keep complete the bad bacteria in the drains consequently paving the way for um, a proliferation of good bacterial growth and uh, gets rid of uh, harmful smells 
Is it good if you've got your own septic tank? Yeah, it's really good if you've got your own septic tank. You know, septic tanks, occasionally they might smell. I mean, God forbid you use bleach in, in, in any kind of quantity and put that in the septic tanks. If you do, it'll make the septic tank smell something awful. Because what you're doing is you're bumping off all those friendly organisms and encouraging the growth of, of, of unpleasant ones, you know? So instead of using your bleach, you can get, you know, you can use EM cleaning materials, but if you're putting a, a Bakashi liquid down the drains, then it will increase the rate at which those friendly organisms uh, grow in the septic tank. And it breaks the waste down wonderfully and then you don't get any smells. Do I put it in a loo? Yeah, you can put it down a loo, that's absolutely fine. But the best thing to do really is to tap it off and possibly put it in your, you know, in, the, in, in your kitchen sink. And then just perhaps turn the tap or just wash it down the kitchen sink. But it'll stop your, uh, stop your drains blocking up um, and, <laughs> it, and it'll stop them smelling Handy. as well. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. have you got a stool and I haven't? Because you're very short. I see. <laughs> Okay, so here's so was one. Was that the answer you wanted? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not exactly. Here's one I made here or I'm very earlier. Tall, possibly one of the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you are. I've seen yeah. the top of your head for the first time today. <laughs> now, here's one I made here earlier. You'll right. note I've managed to change the colour of the bin during the process. Uh, uh, yes, indeed, indeed. Well, I mean, you get different types of bins. Uh, I mean, the bin. Uh, the Bakashi bin is, is important because these bins have been, the plastic has been inoculated with the kind of um, Bakashi effective microorganism uh, ceramics. So you know you get, it's the same principle as kind of microbiome fidgets where, where that, that plastic has been, uh, have been inoculated with, with, um, with, a, with, a, with a, fo a formation that's supposed to bump off all bacteria. Uh, well, that's not always a good thing to do really. So what happens here is this encourages the growth of, of friendly bacteria. But the key way. is the bakashi, surely. And the key, I mean, you bakashi is very important. But there is, uh, but there is sufficient evidence that if you will leave your waste in the bucket for long enough, then it will kind of almost do the job oh, itself. Right. There we are. Now this is perfect. Ah! This is absolutely spot on. So you get, you know, you get a little aroma from it when you uh, <laughs> when you take the lid off, but it's not entirely unpleasant. Now this was uh, the interesting here. Oh. Is this was <laughs> this was full right to top, wasn't it? This bucket. Yes, it was. Uh, about, uh, about two, three weeks ago, full right to the top, and you can see the way the volume has dropped down because you've been tapping off the liquid and putting it down the, your, your drains. But so people really aren't going to like that. I mean, that's mouldy. Well, it Isn't it, it dangerous? It is mouldy. Now, uh, there is a, a school of some research, uh, certainly HDO, for instance, have, 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 well, they established that you should wait for a white mould to form on the waste, on the top of the waste, before you take out your bacassia and put it in your compost heap or in your wormery or stuff like that. But actually, uh, my feeling is you don't need to wait that long. Um, and as long as you can notice a, a deterioration in the volume of the waste within the bucket and some liquid has been given off, then when you take the waste from that bucket and put it onto your compost heap or on, a, on your wormery, all those little organisms that have been dormant in that environment that lacks oxygen will suddenly spring to life when there's loads of oxygen and really break it down so quickly. And the worms adore it. You know, they really love it. It just it, uh, it, 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 it gives them a, a wonderful sense of, uh, of well-being in a wormery. I recommend, dear viewer, that you do this outside. My kitchen is honking of Bokashi now. <laughs> do it outside. <laughs> Honestly, that was the best part. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't smell like that. <laughs> bit too long. I've left it a bit too long. But seriously, I, I, I add my waste, and, and it's no problem to add it in your kitchen. It's no problem to keep it in your kitchen. No. But when you start moving it, it does smell. Well, you, well it, the, the extent to which it is, will smell very much depends on how long you've uh, had it kicking around for. Because really, you wouldn't want to leave your bakashi or your waste in the bakashi bucket for any more than two weeks. If you leave it for longer, then, uh, then it will start to smell because you are, in many respects, encouraging the sort of organisms to, to, uh, to, to proliferate that you perhaps don't want in there. So, um, so yeah, after a two-week period, I would say get it out onto the compost heap or dig it straight into the veggie patch or put it into the wormery. So I put my waste in here and it looked like waste. Yeah. I've dealt it Oddly. for cashy. <laughs> <laughs> I've dealt it a dose of Bokashi on yeah. a regular basis yeah. and I've pickled it for two weeks. Yeah. Now, Rich, yeah. it looks like waste. It looks like waste. How it, can you it? call it's this not, composting? It's not, uh, yeah, it's a, what, what's, what it's done is it's kind of, it's taken, it's like, you know, sometimes you see on horror films, you know, somebody will have their life sucked out of them, you know, like uh, a, a Night of the Living Dead or something like that, and they've had all their life sucked out of them and they look like a, a shell. 
and, the, and this kind of wizened up shape of their, of their former self. Right? Now well, I haven't got that's... over Glenn Close yet, <laughs> coming out of the bath in that real horror film. <laughs> well, that's exactly what's happened in, uh, in, uh, in the Picasso market. So it's uh, so that's that's uh, the, all your waste, your tomatoes and your carrots and your tea bags have been have been subjected to uh, to to pickling effect, you know, and uh, and their the, the volume and their um, and their former selves have deteriorated. So is it anaerobic? You know, how yeah, do, it's anaerobic is there in the, air? In the how does it work? No air in there. To... Yeah, absolutely, you're absolutely right. What you would do uh, once once really once you filled the bucket up is uh, once you, you put you can put the lid on, open the tap. Squeeze the lid down quickly and it just throws uh, any residual air that might be in the bucket out of the bucket, tighten the tap up, and then you've got a completely anaerobic environment. A tap perp. It's a <laughs> indeed, yeah, it is. A little <laughs> a silence. <laughs> a silent perp. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, so, so that's it. And so then all the uh, anaerobic organisms, um, like things like uh, lactobacillus, you know, like lactic acid bacteria that used to be used years ago for, for fermentation, for making, making alcohol and, uh, and yeasts um, and, uh, and fungi and whatnot, those kind of organisms that don't require oxygen will kick in. And when you take it out of the bucket, it's the organisms that require oxygen that finish the job and break it down and make the most wonderful compost. And of course, the best thing about Bokashi is that it makes all the nutrients in that waste so much more available to, to plant, plant growth and vegetation. So really what you're doing is you're able to improve the quality of your food um, by using Bokashi because it, 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 it better equips them with, the, um, with, with being able to take up the, the nutrients that remains in the soil. So the Japanese were miles ahead. Well, it was an accident, you know. And we was talked it? about this before, yeah. I mean, the whole thing, um, the, the Bokashi thing was a complete accident because what happened is the, is the guy, um, the professor... Um, Terahiga. That's it. He, uh, he, he was uh, well, washing was his... Oh, well done, well done. He was washing his laboratory uh, apparatus and, uh, and he couldn't quite clean off some of these, of these organisms. You know, they were, they were uh, just hanging on in there. Um, so uh, so he, what he discovered is he'd, uh, he'd stumbled upon a community of, of, of microscopic organisms that were wonderfully symbiotic, that kind of help each other along in life. And that's what, exactly what Bokashi is. The, the, um, the, the E.M. Bokashi is a, a mixture of about 80 different species of microscopic organisms. Well, I'll go to the foot of our stairs. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.